So I just wanted to um, thank you, and I'd like to say that um, I'm glad that my two roles as dean as, and interim director of the museum have made me, uh, have given me this honor of being invited, as I feel, as an interloper here among such star-studded um, cast of presenters, artists, and guests. Um, and I apologize that also these dual roles have prevented me from doing what I like to call enjoying living in conference time, where you just get to sit and absorb the dialogue and the information when everything's kind of ended, you're not in school, you're not, you're not teaching, you're not doing anything. Um, and I'm hoping that, I understand that many of you have enjoyed that dialogue and that living in conference time for the last two days. I met quite a few of you at the opening last night, and you were abuzz with conference liveliness that I was trying to suck a little life off of. <laughs> um, and I'm really excited uh, to be here and to see um, Lynching Man's uh, presentation, and also for the Q&A, because I was also told by Chris that they've been really, really um, exciting Q&A sessions the entire conference um, this week. So I just want to do a brief introduction, and then we're going to hear the, the presentation and then have that community session. Okay. Um, Lin Ching Min is professor and director of the Department of Arts and Design at the National Taipei University of Education, Taipei, Tuan, uh, Taiwan. His research interests concern the study of images, aesthetics, and contemporary French thought. His books include Realistic Photography and Photo Reportage, that he wrote with Xiao Zhengzhen in 2004, and Multiple Intention on the History of Photography and Photographic Portraiture from 2013. He is also an art critic and curator, as well as a translator of Baudrillard, Foucault, Benjamin, and Julian. He has also um, curated in the last couple of years a number of shows at such places at his own university museum um, in Taipei, at the Venice Biennale, and in, um, at the Taipei Art Museum as well. So without further ado, I would like to welcome him up to the podium right now. Museum practices has been made in 2009. 
and with a more ambitious, as a, as a more ambitious show, has traveled internationally uh, in eight cities and produced a much more voluminous catalog in comparison with the 48 pages of small catalog published by uh, George Eastman Hall at that time. Yeah, and a lot of study has been done uh, to this show. That's just to say it's important. And today we have this show here in dialogue with it. The new topographics as a uh, bibliographical survey will reveal has been studied from different angles like aesthetics, history of photography, history of art, environmental movement, visual cultural studies, cultural landscape studies, which we are here uh, to discuss, and even uh, in the context of film studies, etc. So I propose in this scary talk to make some remarks on this uh, on it in certain historical uh, points of view. Uh, firstly, the exhibition itself has a history, and with a genetic criticism accent, uh, one may study the process of its initiation, preparation, realization, including the publication without it, and the becoming of the show. After. In other words, the first part of my work, of my talk, will take the story of the show itself. The subject. So to begin, who are behind this story? These four persons. Uh, of course, the uh, curator is important. He was very young, uh, 32 years old at that year, uh, 1975. And he was formed at the Visual Study Workshop, Rochester, and became assistant curator at uh, 1971 at the age of uh, 28. His tutorial approach is marked by his uh, teacher, Nathan Williams, who has curated a show called Told a Social Landscape in 1966, also in uh, George Eastman House. And that is uh, what I call wonderful in our conference is that I don't have to present what is social landscape because it was done by Miguel uh, this morning. And Lyons has raised already the following question that comes in verse here. He said in his title, do evidences of natural landscape have greater aesthetic value than evidence of what we might term a man-made landscape? So the vernacular landscape of the new topographic uh, question already raised by the teacher of William Jenkins. And when Jenkins has already done a show in the same year before uh, this show in topographics, that is called the <coughs> extended document, an investigation of information and evidence in photographs. So he's working already on the new approach of our documentary in that period. So let's come to another person who is Joe Dio, and Joe Dio will give us an uh, idea that it's very meaningful to talk about this historical show in here, uh, here in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Because Joe Dio is the person who has done this uh, link, like others, many others. Joe Dio, strange post, is a former security guard of a, a George Eastman house. And he studied with Van Deren Hope, the ancient um, George Eastman house um, director after um, Bomo Ningbo. These two persons are put in this uh, role. But, uh, if I can do it, if I can curate this uh, baseball card, <coughs> I will put them in the role of um, the coach, in the place of referee or player. They play the role uh, much like a coach to these uh, young people. And um, Joe Dio has um, studied with um, Coke and Thomas Barrow here, and they come in after this, and uh, FA become manager of an exhibition at George Eastman House. And he himself is selected. He's also an artist himself. himself his works are also uh, selected in the show. So he uh, worked a lot with um, Bill Jenkins. So that is the ancient the cover of the ancient catalog. 
And on the cover, we can see the artist in alphabet order uh, presenting on the show. There are 10 persons, uh, only one woman. The question of gender has been raised uh, already after. The only woman is the wife of Bernd uh, Becher, uh, Hila Becher. So they, actually there are nine groups. Nine. Not, there are 10 artists together, but there are only nine groups because Bernd and Hila uh, work together. Zero. The real story, as curator I know well, the real story of the show is a practical story. In early 1975, uh, Jenkins found that he has uh, to fill an exhibition slot. We know what that means. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they do it in only in several months. Actually, that happened. Normally, we do a show uh, one year before, two, even two, but that in that moment, he has to do uh, this show, this historical show only uh, in a few months. And he switched by this uh, more um, ambitious project to do a historical survey. He switched to a show a project focusing on the contemporary artist works. Mm -hmm. He built a show on photographers whose works he knew and back the choice of exhibited pieces uh, to the artists themselves. That means he chose the artist. But the pieces the decision of the pieces uh, of works uh, to be exhibited is left to the choice of, of the artists themselves. And by the installation shot, what we call installation shot, we can tell that for the installation, Jenkins regrouped the works of some artists together to form kind of group. Here's the corner of, uh, uh, I think, of Robert Adams. We can see here. And some of them are the kind of group, and some of them you can tell in the far end of the hole. Some of them are from the kind of column, one on the top of the other. So, what kind of works are exhibited in that show? So, I will do a kind of a very brief um, presentation of this show by alphabet order of artists. That is what, how it is constructed uh, in the catalog. So firstly, you have uh, Robert Adams. Adams, as we know, has already um, published this very important work that called New West, dated 1974, and he has contributed several um, works in this series. Here you have the uh, mobile house, mobile homes. That could be one important uh, Theme in the vernacular. <coughs> uh, there's also, yeah, of course, the, the research of the um, uh, foreground and background relationship very clearly, very clearly in this uh, wonderful picture with the very hot light on the house, this mobile house. <coughs> mobile houses. Then uh, we have Louis, Bounce. All of them are, all of them are born except Robert Adams. All of them are born in the 1940s, so they are in their 30s when they um, participate show. They are relatively young artists, but they are not so young. They are also already um, rising, I should say rising stars. They are, some of them are already confirmed artists, as you will see. Of course, uh, uh, Ben and Hila, uh, from an exception because they are, uh, they are um, a German. And then we, we have um, an alphabet order, Louis Bounce. He showed prints in recent published book, Industrial Parts, near Irvine, California. Here we have a construction which will uh, do the echo in actual show uh, with uh, the Dobra <coughs> uh, Hunter that we can see after. <coughs> And this one, we have uh, only two, I think, we have only two works of original pieces in that show. This is one of it, by Louis Bounce, Louis War, uh, semi -colon. So it's a kind of a, um, they call it kind of a warehouse uh, series. But I think some of them are uh, working stations, working offices.
So um, now we have the code breakers. Um, code breaker, one of the code breaker images by uh, Benetila Baker. They are born in uh, each other in, uh, respectively in 31 and 34. So another <coughs> generation. And this is the beginning is the beginning of their work, their um, painting in the uh, United States before they work in Germany. And you can see uh, they take systematically systematically uh, image the object from different angles, the same object, the same um, industrial construction. <coughs> so it's very methodical and systematical and even typological research of an industrial uh, <coughs> from the modern period. <coughs> and here comes um, that is another work. That is the work. Um, some of the some of the images um, I uh, put here are not from uh, the ancient uh, catalog, but are images uh, which are in this actual show. So that is another step. Exactly the same. I should tell that. So here comes um, Joe Dills himself's work. He um, contributed 18 scenes, the newly constructed houses against every claim, American Southwest, Albuquerque. So that's what is very meaningful to uh, be here. Also, we have to travel a bit to look at you know, the field itself. Of course, that changed quite a lot. But uh, that is not uh, really the, the track houses. But the my homes, which could be uh, one of the preferred subject of vernacular landscape. I think they are more uh, for the middle class houses. And one thing very important is that we employ the looking down angle to eliminate uh, the horizon. But um, one thing important, I don't know if you can see well, is in this picture you, see, you uh, can find the human figure. In this show, it's that there is no human figure except in one picture. I think that is here, in the motorcycle, on the motorcycle. And here comes the two images in this show. So we can see in that period, show the work on this looking down angle, which is not far from the aerial view we have talked about. We have talked a lot in these two days already. And here comes the picture, the photo of Goki. I think he's among us. I'm very um, glad that he's, he could be among us. And I have, we have discussed a bit about this image in the, in the opening yesterday. In the reproduction, many people will think that it's a water surface. Actually, it is not. It's kind of concrete, slant concrete, built wall uh, by a kind of panel which is not very visible, but is on the, you know, the lower side of the picture. And both is represented uh, mostly by his recent, recent images on the roads, houses, parking, and other uh, human uh, built, human construction. And I have to remind you this one, is, uh, a picture of Albuquerque. I don't know if you can find it somewhere. <laughs> okay, that is the parking. Yesterday, to, to, uh, yesterday I think to drive to park. Yeah, so the parking is very important for this <coughs> uh, automobile civilization of the United States. And here comes Nixon, Nick Nixon. Like the old contributed image to Boston, other side of the continent, taken uh, in some elevated position. Like here. And John Shot uh, contributes his travel scene and presents some Route 66 motels image. We are very striking by this, as a visitor, by the, all these myths around Route uh, 66. <laughs> <laughs> and in that period already, he has two uh, these images. Just on these images, like in the motel, and this one I found a bit nostalgic or something. Mm -hmm. The Stephen Shaw, which is uh, 
born in 1947, but very famous already when he's uh, when he was very young. So it's a bit exceptional to um, um, have Stephen Shaw in this um, show because he, not only he's young and famous already, but he has um, uh, he has a practice of color that is the only one. <coughs> He uh, has already done some cross country trips. So, of the offers some uh, three views to this show. And uh, that's why it's Henry Vessel, Vessel GR, a shot object leader on assuming human built unit in, in, in this western, uh, western, region, <coughs> western part of the you know, US. That is telephone, uh, box, or this. Uh, Hollywood construction. So how to understand uh, this show? This is the answer Adams. It's always said that the show is uh, mounted count as the counterparty, as a, a kind of new voice against the romantic landscape view, landscape practice um, represented by Adams or Minor White. So this is one of the picture now in the, our show here. And how to know this, um, understand um, our show, I think some contextual elements um, for the explain, explanation of the of why of this event is important. Are important to have an uh, understanding of some contextual element. And uh, uh, there I will introduce perhaps another uh, important element, but uh, that is, I, I have this idea um, in hearing this conference among you, the idea of it, which uh, Madame Pinder is very glad to hear it, the crossroad. I think the show is there in a very so-called very rare moment by a kind of crossroad of several elements. And between them, because when we only read, when we read the uh, interpretations, we'll see many of them are contradictory. So I, I think the idea of crossroads be uh, interesting to be introduced here because the crossroads uh, have some come to the point with some direction and with mm -hmm. other direction to go or to to come could be, which could be the complete opposite or public uh, relationship with uh, what is present. So the first element or the first keyword understand this show, uh, I think it's so-called extended documentary aesthetics, which is already practiced by um, Jenkins himself, in contrast with the new document uh, aesthetics, which is the type of exhibition, also historical exhibition, created by John Sapolsky in MoMA, New York, in 67. Uh, uh, for Sapolsky, the new, the so-called new document, new document aesthetics has, I quote, redirect the technique, the aesthetic of the documentary photography to more personal ends. And here we are stressed this on objectivity, that can, attitude, pretending neutrality, the so-called styleless style. So that's the first element. But they are contradictory interpretation, contradictory reading, even a reaction in the moment. The second element is what we are doing, talking here, talking about here is the cultural landscape studies. Like Jackson has urged us to look at ordinary surroundings, the nuclear landscape, etc. All these things become uh, important, valuable, uh, deserve to be. Uh, taken as images in the uh, photography and to be exhibited in an important place like George Eastman House and the others. The third one is the, I think we will have the talk after. The third one is about the survey history of the media, like all these uh, uh, 49 parallel survey in the mid uh, 19th century, FSA survey, geological expectation, etc. But one thing very important is that that ancient survey, we will talk about that later, in the old topographics 
the ancient surveys are kind of a public commission by <coughs> this um, series conducted for the first series conducted by our country <coughs> for Gabbers, uh, personal personal initiation, personal project. So they are much more like upwards than a public commission. Even they are a strong, kind of strong relationship. Then the fourth element is the serial works. The uh, practice of art by serial works. Not only in series, but kind of a very methodical, methodical and uh, systematical uh, serial work. And also um, the background of minimalism, control, <coughs> and the airborne camera, etc. All that is, all, the, all those practices around. And the fifth, the fifth one, a bit, um, I have discussed with um, Chris Wilson himself. He's not really very agree with that, but he still he thinks it's important to know is the general cultural ambience. <coughs> about counter-cultural movement, about environmental consciousness, etc. <coughs> so I think I have run all the time out, <coughs> but I still I want us to see some uh, old <coughs> topographics. This already noticed in the review of 75 that this show evokes the whole history of photography and not only represent the aesthetic of landscape country in the romantic and sublime photography of the West, in which the leaders are Adams here and Man of White. And uh, um, so which is the relationship uh, between the <coughs> photographs and the historical precedent that we are uh, examining, we are examining uh, here in this actual show in the museum of the um, uh, museum of this university. The ideal top topography itself have, should be um, do a deeper investigation. Because topography is related to the map, the ge geographical survey, the images of vernacular in places and architecture. But William Jenkins has another formulation. He said that the detailed and accurate description of a particular place, city, town, district, state, parish, or track, track of land is the definition of topography. So uh, perhaps in comparison with the old uh, topographic photographs, we can have a sunlight on the newness of these new topographics. So here, Francis Fries, Jackson, and Watkins, they have done all these so-called old uh, city views, picture with rails in the nature, and Ajay, who is this picture, uh, image is here. And another one, who is, which is, should not be here, but I heard <coughs> of Curtis by Edward Curtis. It's a bit perched, a coma. I don't know if we can see very, um, On the, on the top of the hill is the, the church. But behind the church, that is the city. But that city in this angle could not be very clearly seen. But still, you can tell by uh, this evenness, evenness of the uh, construction, there's something human after. So this, this uh, picture of course, is not so classical in its words, but I think we can say something that is <coughs> also a kind of picture photography, photographs of man-made uh, environment, man-made landscape. And in the show of uh, Wilson, we have Cartier Bresson, <coughs> Cartier Bresson, Freelander. Freelander is in the show a new document. And brochure uh, talk by uh, Cigar, unique cigar. So um, to conclude, to do a conclusion, um, I think the old uh, topographics are in a, another crossroad. The first element is public commission. The other one is the pictorial tradition, because they are a kind of pictorial tradition of this past. The view of the city, which is uh, taken by the 19th century photographers, 
you will figure a photographer go like Sabine to the high mountains with very heavy equipment, very heroic, and uh, create modernity in the picture. So, um, but we have to, to know the history, we have to have our own standing point. So, the Brock Hunter also is play a foreground background and the foundation of construction in geometric form in contrast with the nature of configuration mountains under very beautiful light. And this construction, um, Dobra herself uh, has told me that um, she um, takes the photos of the, of the construction in several uh, taken, not only in one picture. So it's in a process. And you see the sky menacing the sky. The, the other one by also by uh, Steve Gates who has developed uh, is <coughs> uh, not only the vernacular landscape behind the construction, but also the, the also the, the object to construct it, the tools to construct it, but also the, the human intervention on the representation itself to tell us it's a representation, not itself as a construction, not the nature of landscape. And uh, that movement is followed after the show by Struz, student of Kena uh, Hila, and Kena Hila, a picture, it's a street scene taken by him in Europe, across the world. It's a kind of central perspective to read the psychology of the city or by Thomas Roof, which has got a series of serial investigation of interiors, the middle of the class, two ago, and come to these houses, German houses after the war, after the Second War. But in Roof, there is already a practice, different practices, different attitudes, because sometimes he uh, do with law, with the course production, with law, some element which he found not so familiar to him in this picture. Silent and Animate in the after uh, post production. <coughs> so I think I will stop here because we are running out of time. And if you, have, you want to see other contemporary images, you can come back. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
photography program um, here and to be uh, the director of the museum. So that's why those two things are so closely linked. Um, and I'd love to uh, start off uh, with one of my own questions for you. And that is something that we had talked about a little bit before you started. Um, something that I find fascinating about the history of this um, exhibition of the new topography um, is that um, it was remounted frequently. And I think that that's a very interesting thing for me as a historian that I also find uh, very uh, common with photography as well, is that this, this desire to um, reinterpret one show again and again which you don't necessarily see in the history of famous painting shows or sculpture shows. Um, and I'd love for you to maybe comment about that. While, while you're thinking, can I just give a quick? Donc, um, elle pose la question, enfin, fait remarquer que souvent en photographie, enfin, parfois en photographie, comme c'est le cas de cette exposition, on a tendance à refaire une exposition euh, qui avait déjà été monté et donc euh, à la différence de la peinture, de la sculpture et d'autres formes, euh, elle demande pourquoi euh, spécifiquement en photographie est-ce qu'on a cette, euh, cette tendance. For example, friend, uh, but what he told me that the show remounted uh, in uh, by uh, by uh, uh, George Eastman House because they had a whole set, a whole set of, the, of, of all these photographs. So I think it's easier to do. For example, the, the picture generations has been uh, remounted, but we should do for, for all the interesting show because it's. Uh, it's a method to, to research. Just we have said that it's hopeless to have a performance installation show, installation shop and other things. Uh, so to do it in, uh, in the real, in the true dimensional, it's very important for the research and to understand. Of course, I think there are some commercial, we have some commercial reason or other, maybe application reason behind that. This is other. The painting is so expensive today to mm -hmm. recruit all the elements. Already to do a show, it costs what a life to do it. And so to redo it, it's not that it will be quite possible. Donc en plus des motifs commerciaux, il y a aussi euh, la question de la facilité dans la mesure où les photographies existent souvent dans des collections euh, permanentes. Et c'est le cas par exemple de la maison euh, Eastman à Rochester où il dispose de toute la série des photographies qui avaient été montées euh, dans la première exposition et donc euh, il est dans un sens plus, euh, plus facile euh, de refaire ce genre de, ce genre de série. Yeah, so I, just one last thing I'll open up to um, questions from the audience is that one thing I just would like to put out there as a, as a, as a thought is that when shows are remounted, um, that also affects their history, right? Because then they're not, again, being a historian, how so many things are interpreted through the criticism and the books that are published on older shows or older art, you know, artists when you don't have access to the work itself. What I find, and I put this out to all of you as possibly something to think about, is what happens when a show gets remounted um, decade after decade um, to its actual history and the history of those um, photographs that are in it. It then has, it's entering into the dialogue, maybe this is what you can interpret, um, of the history um, frequently, again and again, um, which I think is fascinating to me. Donc, Mme Pouver fait remarquer que à chaque fois qu'on remonte une uh, exposition photographique, on est en train en fait de modifier la perception historique, uh, non simplement des œuvres, mais aussi uh, de refaire le contexte dans lequel l'exposition peut être uh, interprétée. Donc, 
sauf l'histoire. L'histoire elle-même, en fait, est une sorte de réinterprétation euh, perpétuelle et euh, sans fin. Uh, just to use uh, uh, two concepts that came up yesterday, and that is, uh, is photography retrospective or prospective? You know, does it look to the past? Uh, and as a, as a historian, I'm often looking to the past. And the things. You know, or is it part of the current uh, cultural dialogue, especially, you know, planning, land use, environmental treatment dialogue? Does it look to the future? And uh, I just suggest for consideration that the first showing of the new Tokyo graphics was very prospective. It was crystallizing a, a sensibility about suburbia and the automobile. Uh, and that uh, the restagings uh, tend to be more retrospective. They're, they're more part of the historical discourse. Donc, euh, il suggère qu'il faut peut-être considérer si la photographie elle-même est, est rétrospective, est une forme, est une forme, est une forme rétrospective ou prospective. Et donc, euh, s'il faut euh, interpréter les photographies euh, par rapport à un passé, ce qui est le cas des historiens, ou bien s'il faut euh, considérer que les, que les photographies Uh, anticipe uh, un avenir et uh, c'est notamment le cas par exemple de l'exposition des topographies uh, dont on vient d'entendre parler et um, peut-être il faut aussi considérer que à chaque fois qu'on remonte une exposition cette exposition modifie et rend plus actuelle uh, la perception des photographies dans la série. Okay, so maybe now we can open this up to questions from the audience. This is kind of picking up on what you were saying about um, the iterations. Um, two related questions. One, the context in which they're related, um, where, where the next each exhibition is. Is it an architecture school context? Is it an art photography context? How does that affect? Um, but um, the, the, the real question I wanted to um, ask you to think about is, is um, how do we know the photographs differently with exhibitions and with books? Um, what's the difference between knowing them through an exhibit and knowing them through a book that can impact? That's also something, Robert, a lot of these photographs have appeared in books again and again and again and again and again. Um, one good thing is that reproductions are a lot better now. I mean, if you, how many people have access to the original ones? And if you look at Adams' early reproductions or the catalog, they're not great reproduction that you see in real life. I mean, especially somebody like Paul, I think, in a different way. So that difference between exhibitions and books really is something hard to think of. Il pose donc la question, enfin, en tant que constat, c'est le cadre dans lequel l'exposition se déroule, se passe, et euh, si c'est dans une école d'architecture, dans une école de photographie, euh, ça modifie euh, la perception de l'exposition à même. Mais aussi et surtout, la question porte sur euh, la différence entre les photographies euh, dans une exposition, par opposition, par rapport aux photographies euh, dans des livres, dans des reproductions et qu'est-ce qui se passe à chaque fois qu'on qu qu examine des photographies qui sont en fait des reproductions d'autres photographies euh, dans le contexte d'un livre. So, I thought we have a response for that. Yes, it's true that context is almost everything, but um, it's vision to be uh, considered as a text system, so it creates kind of interior context. So, if we want to remount the show, we have to Document the exhibition because in the document it's 
open that includes acid that cannot be really great red in the in the condition side venue. So um that's my idea. Donc, euh, Luigi Ming fait remarquer que la pièce importante dans ce processus oui. serait peut-être le catalogue lui-même, le catalogue qui est une sorte d'œuvre intermédiaire entre l'exposition et euh, le livre lui-même, et qu'il faut parfois considérer qu'une exposition peut être aussi considérée et lue comme un livre. Ok, I think we have time for just one more question. Um, it's been interesting to me how much of both the new photographic and Jackson's work is really an argument about whether it's appropriate to show cars, telephone lines, private homes in the photographs. I'm wondering if you would like to speculate a little bit. It's well documented that the generation that's now coming of age prefers to live in urban housing, doesn't want to own a car, <coughs> uses a smart car if they have one, and the telephone lines are going away with cellular. Are we going to get to a point where these photographs and the new topographics strike people as, as old-fashioned as the Hudson School strikes us at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll give the question to the visit. I just said one word. I'm from Asia, and I think the uh, internet superhighway is a very good invention. <laughs> la question c'est est-ce que euh, une bonne partie de la discussion autour de la topographie, de la nouvelle topographie, euh, concerne la présence des voitures, donc la présence des, des lignes, des photos télépathiques, téléphoniques, etc. Et euh, Monsieur pose la question est-ce que dans une époque actuelle où ces choses sont en train de disparaître ou de se transformer, est-ce que les, euh, les gens qui regardent et considèrent la photographie actuelle vont, nous, euh, vont avoir la réaction de nous souvent devant les tableaux du 19e siècle euh, qui, montrent des, qui montrent des choses anciennes euh. oh, No response from me. I think it was a question that made a, you know, a good and convincing point. And uh, in the interest of moving on, I'm simply going to thank you for inviting me to sit here with you and thank you for your comments. <laughs>